is working. Now new and improved with super wide floating brushes. As you can see the trolley going on the curved track, note the wire hanging off of it. I mentioned it before, but of course the power has to come from some kind of rails in the track. And uh, the rails are the, the parts that make contact with the brushes. That video shows that the trolley is going in the aluminum part of the track, but that track doesn't even have the PCB on the bottom yet. There, there are no brushes, there's nothing for it to contact. So I made one and put it together. Uh, Back when I did it, I needed to attach the PCB. And so here are the holes I'm drilling them. They're only about one eighth of an inch deep. Little tiny 172 taps, a very fussy little operation. But uh, a little bit of drop of oil and it seemed to work all right. So I got to work making the brushes, clamped uh, a stack of them together and drilled the holes on either end for a 440 screw. This is just the process of going through that. Um, the brushes are really thin metal and they're only brass. I intend to try to get something a little more springy and a little more resilient. And when you're down this thin, you know, the, uh, the thickness is really kind of crucial. So 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 to 10,000. One cool thing about this design is that you won't easily be able to see the, con the, the conductors since they're on the bottom of the track on the PC board under there. At first glance, you you know, you can't see them at all. You'll be able to kind of get down low and look up under there and see them. And the brushes themselves are tiny. Uh, you have to look close to see those. And if you've been following, you need to stay tuned because this whole suspended train feature is going to be the thing that gets mounted to the actual table, that starts the table inside the Kineticon. And then it gets more interesting after that when all the other parts start finding a home inside the machine. Um, the process of building this system means that, you know, you work on all these individual pieces and parts and it's kind of hard to get a picture of what it's going to end up looking like. Way back when I built the first machine, I remember uh, a friend seeing it and he, he, I was excited for it and I was telling him it's going to be great and <laughs> he looks, he came down and looked at it. It was in my, my father's basement, you know, and he saw that there was basically a wooden table and it had this barbecue spit motor attached to it. And he says, oh man, Dale, it's just a, it's just a gearbox on a table. <laughs> and I felt kind of bad, but it was, it was, at that time it was a, you know, you, you don't see the vision that I, that I had. And so anyway, it was a funny story to me at the time. Um, and then when he did, when everybody did see it, they were like, oh, that's what you meant. <laughs> it was kind of satisfying, I guess. And I'm drilling brushes and you can see how it works. I've got to clamp them down under a block on top, down to a block on the bottom. And then I come in with a profile mill and go around the outside multiple times uh, and then rough them out. Uh, the places where I don't want the little tiny 1 16th end mill going into too deep of a cut because they're pretty fragile. I've broken my share. So I went around it over and over with several passes on a 1 16th inch end mill. That's a long end mill and it cuts down through the brass at the bottom and the sacrificial clamp piece on top. And now I'm taking it apart. You can see the pieces are left individually and they're almost perfect because they're clamped down as they're milled. So with those parts it needed the tabs cut off. I like these old scissors from the Regal Cleaners in Salt Lake City. They were a gift from my my wife's grandfather. I'm going to solder the, uh, the brushes onto the PC board. I removed the old ones and I'm putting them on. When I go to do this for the final time and a better material, I'll set them up a little more carefully than rather than just holding them tweezers. It's hard to get them as accurate as they really need to be. And then we solder wires on and the wires will be soldered on in the future in little pockets that I mill out of the PC board exposing the uh, copper layer on, uh, from the back. And I'll solder them in those little holes. 
All right, this is a reality check. This is actually the first time I've ever tried running the carriage with actual sliding contacts. And I mean, this is the first time. I didn't pre-check it before the video. Let's see what happens. Wrong direction. Well, that's easy. Change the polarity. This is 12 volts with a 15 ohm power resistor. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I need more ohms. <laughs> I had the curve made in aluminum. And uh, of course, as I mentioned before, it needed a PCB. And I went with, I made that five, five inch long section of track and it was complete. It had the PCB attached the way I planned with the rails exposed. And to make it, I cut it out on a bandsaw at first, oversized, then attach it to the table any which way I can um, just to get the, the holes drilled. It attached with those 172 screws onto the milling piece and I went down the middle with a 1 8 inch end mill to take out the center section and that left two conductors. I've got a weight hanging on it because it needs to balance side to side. It's got a little movement this way. If I take the weight off it tends to want to lean out a little bit because there's a little more weight on the inside. But this will be Weight is good. You, you want a little weight on these things and, judging from my experience with the model trains, and you, uh, I'll be able to, when there's a train car down there, I'll be able to put whatever weight I want on it. Uh, and the track has the PC board on the bottom and a joiner right here. There will be a number of these joiners because the track is in, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, at least 10 sections. All right, here's the first test of the suspended trolley. And let's see what we get out of it here. It's slipping. But it works. Hangs up on the joint. goes slow it's likely that it's going to work fine going fast that's medium That's pretty fast. Works better going fast and slow. Anyway, it's nice to see it work. Pylons. Before I can get this mounted to the machine, it's going to be it's going to have to have something to hold it up, and that's what the pylons are about. And um, I'm thinking of making them like this, maybe with some truss work inside. I know that's a very interesting look with little tiny nuts and bolts. Those would be those would be double lot nineties right there, and then it would it would be completely suspended around the inside of the machine as you can see here, although there aren't enough pylons yet, and um, that's kind of the layout that I'm looking for, and I think that's going to be all for now. So, thanks for watching. The next one ought to be the thing fully running around the loop. Stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot. Bye.